how do you handle having very young kids all close together? I know you worked as a nurse. I'm very interested in hearing about your time working as a nurse internationally. How do you handle kids that are fighting siblings? She's starting to homeschool, third and fourth grade. How do they enjoy the journey with all the pressure and stress that might come with it? Welcome back to another video. I'm answering your questions today. I'm out here in my RV. I'm the cleaning lady. I clean the RV when we're flipping it around because we rent it out and it just came back um, and it needs cleaning. And so I work a little, take a break, clean part of it. Work a little, take a break, clean part of it. I got a laundry pile behind me on the couch you probably can see. And I have a lovely view. It's quiet out here. So I thought this is a perfect place to film today. Do you guys mind when I share personal updates of what we're doing? <laughs> there's my lovely fall house. There's a dog there. You can see there's another dog and cats running around. So I also get a lovely view. I probably look a little pale. I just came off like a Oh, six day stomach bug. You know, I'm making progress, but I might look a little pale and not quite myself yet <laughs> because I'm not quite myself. Every time, I, I traveled overseas a number of years ago, several years ago, and I got Shigella. And ever since I got that, it is not like a long term, stays with you forever, but um, ever since then, a couple times I've gotten a stomach virus and it's been like almost like Shigella and nobody else gets us sick or anything like that. So it's just so weird. I feel like it changed, not that I still have Shigella in me, I definitely do not, but I feel like it changed something in my body and nobody else really got sick. I just get, I this is second time now since that incident that I've gotten very sick for almost a full week. Lost a lot of weight all at once. And, just been bedridden basically so I'm happy to be up seeing the light of day enjoying fall walking around our lake uh, getting back to real life so uh, Megan sent a question in let's watch this hey Sarah my name is Megan I'm a mom of five and here's my question for you there are certain parts of my day where I feel like I really want to micromanage because it keeps my sanity but I don't want to like squash my children for instance when it's snack time there are some of my kids that are very capable of getting their own thing and then others that aren't but with the constant like in and out of the kitchen and people doing multiple things I sort of lose my mind I'm just wondering like how often or how much do you really hold the reins and say okay I'm just gonna take care of it we're all having the same thing and how do you allow some kids to have the freedom because they're capable of doing things without losing your mind help please ah uh, Megan the ultimate question of how do we balance our sanity versus letting our kids grow and change and take responsibility and all of those things. I love it because it just shows me that we're all kind of in the same boat together. <laughs> I, like you, have a number of ages in my home. And so the way I handle that is I definitely want my kids to be independent, um, but I also want to keep my sanity. And so when you talk about like, oh, you're just gonna lose your mind if they keep coming in and destroying everything, I just use parameters for everything. So. Sometimes the parameter is, listen, if you are 10 years old and over and have proved that you can clean up after yourself, you can have your own snack. Everybody else gets what I'm offering at 3 p.m. or whatever, you know, like just parameters. Sometimes it's divided by age because the older ones are definitely capable of cleaning up after themselves and getting their own snack. And sometimes they prove that they did not clean up after themselves and they can lose that privilege after a while of that. But yeah, I, I can see. And sometimes the parameter is just, you know what, I'm just gonna take care of breakfast. We're all having oatmeal on Tuesdays. <laughs> That's just how it is. Uh, because sanity for mom is also important. So it's just a balance, always figuring out, okay, how can I comp compromise here? But also it's important for everyone that I also am happy <laughs> and can keep my sanity. And so maybe for this one thing, I'm just gonna take care of it. With snacks in particular, we have fruit out that they can always have. And then, um, we kind of do the same, we kind of divide it by ages. Like, listen, you you get what I'm offering at this time um, for something different than the fruit, <laughs> or uh, you prove yourself capable of cleaning up after yourself every time you're in. We finally did that with our kids because um, they were older than 10 and not maybe not clean up after themselves when they 
came home for lunch at a different time or whatever. So you can have, I'll save out what we made for lunch or you can continue by making your own thing, but you have to clean up after yourself. Otherwise you cannot. I definitely understand that struggle. I think you just find ways to compromise for the kids that are older or some things, the compromise is just like this one. I'm okay with you doing what you want. This one, we need to, to follow this system here because it's important that everybody is just you know managing things well and working together and that it is manageable for you so what what are your parameters but it was really nice to meet you Megan thank you for the video I love that all right the next question is from Zany she talked about her husband and her had her their first daughter around a year ago and were surprised to uh, how difficult the first couple months were you know I hear that from a lot of first-time parents with their first baby so I don't think that's abnormal at all we're considering having our second we weren't sure how to plan it and handle it with childcare, etc so we live in Aust Australia so our minimum wage to hire someone to help is undoable and the norm here is to send children to daycare centers when the where, which the government subsidizes. However, then the children need to be up to date with all the vaccines that they mandate, which we don't plan to do. We live rurally on a macadamia nut farm and far away from family. So her question is, how do you handle having very young kids all close together? Taking a break and getting help with the child minding, any tips? And she wrote, appreciate you, Zany. Often when I do hear from parents that that first one was really a struggle, usually they don't say the same thing about the second and uh, sometimes they'll say the first one was a breeze and the second one is like Whoa. <laughs> so maybe your second one will, be, will just be a breeze i personally have loved having our kids very close together there's always a season when the new one comes that it, it feels like absolute chaos like what are we doing what life decisions have we made and i love the newborn stage i love it but it is very much a handful so how do you handle little ones together well I do think it is nice because when they are close together there are a lot of benefits so you're in that season all at once so you have little ones but you're just like already in the season of little ones so you're just adding another one so maybe you're home a lot more sounds like you live out rurally you're probably home a lot anyway you're sitting down on the floor playing with little ones anyway so you just have another one on your lap you kind of just in that season you know what I mean so in that way there's a lot of benefits of just being in that season all at once I've been in that season for 20 years but the kids as they start growing they really connect and play together they love each other so that's a huge benefit of having little ones kind of close together um, I know there's a lot of benefits of spacing out to or when, when it just happens that way and they get spaced out there's a lot of benefits there too and then I think communication with your spouse is very important so for me, when I'm very overwhelmed, you know, I just tell my husband, okay, I really need help. Let's plan so that I can have a break uh, because it's a lot. He tries, when, when our kids are very little, we have a new baby, um, he tries to really work his schedule so he can give me more time. But if I, if I need something outside of what we planned, I will definitely communicate my needs and he will definitely try his best to change change roles so he's there a little more for a day and I'm there a little less or whatever so there's a give and take being able to communicate that well is very important if you have any friends where you can um, help each other or just even hang out together with your babies that can also help just that change of pace and having someone else around having some adult conversation you know I always think women have done this for a long long time and we kind of figure it out and as the baby comes we figure it out so you don't really have all the answers before the baby comes of how it's all gonna play out but as the baby comes you will figure out more and more things just be very good at communicating if you're able to have like a, a date night after the after you're able to get out a little more, you know, after that initial postpartum period when you have a baby. Have a date night, have just different times where you can get a mental break. Just plan it in. Maybe every night at seven, just for an hour, you have some time by yourself, if possible. Of course, that's not always possible with, when they're very tiny. For me, I love it when my husband takes the other kids, not the baby, I'd rather just have the baby to myself. But if he takes all the other kids out of the house for a little bit, when I'm very overwhelmed, he does that. He can, now he, we've had a lot of kids, so 
he can just look at my face and be like, I'm gonna get him all out of here. <laughs> and it really is helpful to me when I have a new baby, just to be in my own house, maybe that one area that's driving me crazy, I can just fix up in the house while I got the baby, or just sit there on the couch with the baby by myself. <laughs> There's all kinds of ways we figure out what we need and how to get our, our needs met, but it's important that you do get your needs met. Um, I totally understand not having childcare. I had my parents across the street when I had um, my third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh baby, and it was awesome. I loved that, but I didn't always. My parents now are very far away, so I kind of know both sides of the spectrum, but now that my parents are far away, I do have older kids, but anyway, I would have a friend that would just come over with her babies when I had a bunch of little ones, and she would just bring them over and plop down with me, and I am not the person that would just be like, oh, I gotta get out of the house, I'm taking my babies over to your house, but I was so thankful that she was that person. It made me get a mental break in a way I didn't realize I needed when she would come over and we would just chat and our little ones would be on the floor in front of us together. It was so good, so hopefully you're able to have some sort of community there, accept help when it's offered, um, make friends, be a friend, and yeah, I think it, will, it won't be as hard as you think, I, I believe. Okay, Jennifer wrote in and asked, she's starting to homeschool, third and fourth grader. I feel like I may have mis answered this question before, but um, maybe I've just gotten a lot because a lot of people are starting to homeschool for the first time. She just wondered what advice I have. I'm so excited and nervous, you know? How do they enjoy the journey with all the pressure and stress that might come with it? Don't accept the pressure and stress. That would be my suggestion. Of course, I've homeschooled the whole time, so I'm probably not the best one to ask about this because I haven't gone from pu public or traditional schooling to homeschool, but it is not pressure and stress. You're not answering to people all of the time. You might, depending on your state, you're answering some things to the state but you get to figure out how your kids learn and you get to learn alongside with them and it is so much fun do you have bad days of course in everything you're gonna have bad days but don't accept that pressure and the stress because your kids are going to learn i just read some teacher said that she believes kids that she's a public school teacher and believes the kids learn a hundred times more even the worst of homeschoolers which i probably wouldn't agree with that statement because i'm sure there's exceptions to that rule but there is a lot to be said for that one-on-one -on -one that your kids get a lot to be said for that so i would say take the pressure off and enjoy it find ways to have fun find ways to have fun together do a unit study if you don't know what unit studies are um, it's just like pick a subject and deep dive together on it and just take a week to do that It can be so much fun or just take a day to do that or some people take a month do field trips Do take the pressure off yourself because I guarantee you the pressure is just coming from you Okay, the next one is from Paige and this is not one I have answered before for sure. She said I'm a 26 year old um, single girl I live in a full she didn't say girl <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I live full time in an RV and I work as a paramedic. That's awesome. An RV, how appropriate. <laughs> okay, my question actually has to do with the time before you were married and had kids. I know you worked as a nurse. I'm very interested in hearing about your time working as a nurse internationally. So my questions are, how did you get, get into that? Did you use an organization? I know you have some family that are overseas. So was it a connection through them? And then I just, and then just touch on your experience. What things did you love about it? What things did you hate about it? What would you have done differently and would you recommend someone else do it? Thanks so much for your time, Paige. How did I get into it? Well, I used to hate the idea of being overseas. That is a whole other story in itself. My mind was changed and then it really was personal connections. I do have a lot of family overseas. My Aunt Sharon and Uncle Howard that you see, they didn't get married till, do I wanna say 12 years ago? Has it been 12 years ago? She was single all those years and she was uh, the director of a home for, she was a long time family friend. Used to babysit my mom. They're not too far apart in age, but just long term family friends from Detroit, Michigan. So she was directing a home for HIV positive abandoned infants in Kenya and so that's what I wanted to do. That's why I went to nursing school. So I went there to work with her. I also spent six months in India working at an orphanage, so I didn't have healthcare clinics. I did um, and led some medical mission trips and just non-medical mission trips to um, the Philippines. Love the Philippines. I had a lot of experiences and I loved them 
all. I love traveling. I love being overseas. Love learning about new cultures. I love helping where I can, but I learned so much from the people that I have visited and met. And But I strongly recommend, if you have the chance to travel, if you have the chance um, to just to travel but to work like use your skills that you have as a paramedic is somewhere else I would recommend taking it I mean you have to know what's right for you obviously but for me it was very very much life-changing so I'll tell you the one thing that was the most life-changing ironically <laughs> is that when I was engaged I went to India and I was supposed to be there for a year and it ended up being six months because I was engaged and that was torture <laughs> but I was working um, with a family that I just absolutely loved. They had started this large church years and years back. They had so many ministries, so I was able to do prison ministry. I would work with, um, I was, I would go to these country ch churches way out in the bush. I had so many experiences traveling around. I, I really got a lot of experiences, but I also had so much downtime. I lived in a girl's home that was, um, mostly for orphans, but some it was just very, very poor families that would send their um, girls in to the city. I was in southern India, so they would send them into the city to be educated, uh, or maybe there was some extended family, that kind of situation, but um, nobody really spoke English where I was, and so I would have a lot of time. I was setting up healthcare clinics there. I, like, I really wrote out a lot of stuff for them based on what I was seeing, so there was a scabies outbreak. I would help them, show them how to clean all the stuff, and we'd, we would treat everybody at once and just work through that. But then I would write out, so everything I was seeing, I would just write out procedures, so what to do if this happens, if this happens, and this happens, because I didn't want to just help them while I was there. I wanted to like leave them with, okay, this is how to do it when I'm not here. I was a new nurse, and I didn't have all the answers, but they had literally had nothing in place at all. And so everything I was doing was very helpful for them, um, even though I wasn't like an expert by any means. Uh, I was so grateful for that opportunity, but I really learned, because I, I loved traveling overseas so much, which was, if I told you the story about how I came to love it, you wouldn't even believe it, but it was such a shift for me. I the, And I wanted to be like in the bush. I wanted to go like where nobody spoke any English and just where, where people, I, I just wanted to help people like that no one else was going to, right? That was my desire. And after that experience, I realized, okay, I need other people in my life. Thankfully I was engaged, so I knew I would have somebody else. But I, after that experience, I knew I wasn't cut out to just be like really, really far remote from people. And I thought that I would love that. So um, I did learn in all that time alone, okay, I do need people that understand me. That, that's what I realized it was important to me. Not that I had to live around a whole culture that understood me, but I need someone that once in a while I can be like, wow, don't you miss a good cheeseburger? <laughs> like, what? What's a cheeseburger? <laughs> I needed somebody that really understood me and I, I was thankful the Lord gave me two friends there um, One was the granddaughter there and another one was an American missionary I met later But it helped me a lot. I don't think I would have made it six months if I didn't have those two very good friends so um, I learned that about myself, but you do learn so much about yourself when you're out of your element And I think it's so good. I love getting our kids overseas like you need to learn about other people It gives you such a different perspective Sometimes we we look at the news and what's going on and we have just this such a narrow-minded perspective of Just what we know and the more you can travel and know other people and know how different different cultures are and know that what's going on in your mind is just from your perception, it becomes much more clear. I think it's so important. I would say it's more important than any of the curriculum we do. I, I want my kids to be able, you know, I pray we're blessed to be able to travel with them more. It's huge, it's huge. So I say take any opportunity you can. I'm a big fan of that. I will support you, cheer you on. <laughs> okay, maybe not financially support you, but <laughs> I will cheer you on for sure. Hi Sarah, this is Hannah and I have another question for you. My question is how do you handle kids that are fighting siblings. Um, I have four kids, again, ages 10 down to three, and as we head into summer mode, there has been fighting, and um, just any tips you have on how you guys handle that in your house would be appreciated. Thank you. So there's two ways we handle it. My husband loves to, when kids are not working well together, to give them more jobs together. <laughs> okay, you guys need to work together. To work it out and so he will always give them jobs together which I think I have found to be very effective there's another way we handle it too like when we're going on a long trip I said this many times 
we will separate the fighters because there are some personalities that will always fight. And I guarantee you when they're adults, they're gonna be the best of friends. I just know it. Sorry, my table is wiggling. Um, they're gonna be the best of friends, but right now their personalities just clash and it tends to be the ones that are close together in age, although some of them that are close together in age get along very well. Why deal with that? So sometimes we will make sure that they don't have to work together because you know they don't always have to you don't want to deal with that like in a situation in a small vehicle when you got 24 hours of driving ahead of you i think both things work you got to know what's appropriate for what situation but when they're home all summer they got to get along so you know what when you're not getting along very well it's a good thing i need what do you need the weeds pulled today and you guys are going to work together i want all these weeds pulled and when they're fighting over that job then okay well we're, we're going to get another one too because it's important that we learn to work together but it's also important that people that irritate us that we get a break from them sometimes and we know siblings can irritate each other so i don't know that's my unexpert opinion is i i do a combination of both on a side note to that i i don't like tattletaling so unless someone's going to get hurt I don't want him just running to me all the time. Oh, he did this, she did this, oh. Go work it out, let me know if somebody's gonna get hurt, but otherwise, you know, I think it's important for kids to get through. It's just like, it's okay for kids to get bored because they get more creative. Sometimes kids need to work through something and then they find out that they can actually get along in this one thing, or they, they can play together here or there. You know, this question was, came to me at the beginning of summer and so she obviously went through summer with the kids but this can happen anytime I think summer sometimes kids have stuff especially if they've been at school they're not used to having that much time together so they got to work things out for a little bit all right guys I gotta take off I'm meeting solo because we are gonna sign papers for someone to rent our house big step over here how do I feel about that <laughs> I think pretty good I think it's the right thing to do right now for us so here we go <laughs> send us all your long-term rental advice for signing a year lease and our house will no longer be on the market so yeah there's that <laughs> thank you guys for being here always I appreciate it I, I love hearing from those of you I know not everybody likes these chats but some of you really do and I'm glad for that and thanks for sending in your questions to ask Sarah our tribe of many .com, keeping in mind that this last one was from June 1st so I'm way behind but I'll get there eventually <laughs> we'll talk to you soon guys bye mm -hmm.